What's going on YouTube? It's Eric here with MajorLeagueTrading.com coming at you with another video breakdown video on a trade that I had today. Actually, two trades that I took today. So it is Thursday, June 13th here, and I took a trade in both the S&Ps and the NASDAQ for today. So S&Ps here, uh, $1,233 in profits there, and then the NASDAQ here, $818.20 for a grand total on the day of, I believe, $2,051.20. So the, the big kicker to that is I was done trading this morning by 9.45. So in the first 15 minutes of the day, I was able to pick up a little over $2,000 in profits here. Uh, I didn't take any trade in the Russell there. You can see zero there and then no trade in the Dow either. Uh, so a zero on that one as well. So NASDAQ $818, S&P is $1,233. And I did all of this day trading futures using the level to level strategy that I talk about in each and every one of the videos. So let's go ahead and break down uh, this morning's action and we'll start off with the S&Ps here. This was the bigger trade and one thing I want to kind of touch on first, right? It's a little bit um, of a divergence strategy actually. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is throw up a, let's go with a 15 minute chart and I'm going to turn the extended session on here and I want to point out something that I noticed coming into today here for you guys. So coming into today, right? We're up here uh, right about there, right? 8.30 in the morning, you know, finally getting to the desk, things like that. We've checked quotes in the morning and we're looking at the overnight action here. Well, take a look at the overnight action here in the S&Ps. You can see we've got a high up here in place. We sell off on this bar. This is a 12 and three quarter point bar on the S&Ps for a 15 minute chart. That's, that's a low of the day of 28.67 quarters which is still the, the low in place. You can see we have not traded down to this level just yet. And you'll notice here, this was the low from yesterday's trading session, right about there. 75 quarter ended up being the low from yesterday here in the S&Ps. So what ends up happening is we crack through that low in the overnight session for the S&Ps. Now, I'm gonna flip over to a chart of the NASDAQ here real quick, and you'll see pretty much the same thing here. So oh, there we go. When we switch over to the NASDAQ here, you'll see this low kind of came in place right through there about 7460s. So we ended up cracking on this bar. We ended up cracking down, putting in new lows right down in here, right? So we broke through the prior day's low in the S&Ps and in the NASDAQ. Now let's take a look at the Dow real quick. The Dow here again as well, as soon as this chart loads up on the Dow, Oh, that's my fault. I had the screen drawing tool still. You'll see that this is the low from yesterday in the Dow, about 25,965, 25,970, something like that. Again, that same bar takes us down. We end up setting new lows in the overnight session, um, about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock last night, somewhere around that time frame. We end up getting new lows in the Dow as well through the prior day's low. Now, let's take a look at the Russell here. And in the Russell, we'll see something just a tad bit differently here. You'll see the Russell ends up having lows of the day yesterday, somewhere down here around 1512s. And the overnight lows here for the Russell ended up at about 1515s for today. So I noticed this coming into today, right up in here when I'm doing my analysis, right? And I'm like, okay, the Russell is standing out to me. It's telling me that it did not want to go lower in the overnight session for whatever reason. Um, and I'm going to give that some credibility coming into today, right? Again, one of the the, the two two strategies that I used, the level to level and the divergence, um, I ended up kind of applying the divergence to the overnight session last night, just watching how this price action had unfolded uh, and the fact that we didn't pop down and get those new lows. So wanted to preface with that. Now let's take it back over to the S&Ps for today's action. Uh, and what, you know, what I was looking for coming into today. Well, coming into today, we had a support slash resistance level or a level in place at 2889s. Now, I wanted to make sure that we were going to get above 2889s. And if we could get above 2889s, 
then okay, we've got some room to run to the upside. And I already know in the back of my mind, I'm like, I got that Russell divergence kind of overnight action in the back of my mind. Like, all right, that's something I need to go ahead and pay attention to. So the trade setup here ended up coming off of a smaller time frame chart, combining that 2889 level with a divergent strategy. So let's drill down here into a 987 tick chart. Um, and I'll show you guys what it was that I was watching here first thing this morning that led me to jump into this trade. Um, and that's going to come in, like I said, right here on the 987 tick chart. Oops. Let's try this right here. There we go. So what I'm watching for, and again, this is first thing this morning. This is right after the bell. You'll notice um, 934. So we ended up popping down. We've got these lows in place right through here, right? We ended up popping down right there. As soon as we popped down on lows right there and started rallying back up through 89s, I stepped in and I got long 8975s. And I am an amazing drawer with my mouse here. So that reads 8975s. So I got long 28 8975s and I put on a five lot there. So I traded five contracts. My average exit on this was 94.75. So right up in about here, 94.75 there. So what I was looking at there for a target was overnight highs here for the S&Ps were 94.50s. Coming into today, we had not traded um, 94.50s just yet, obviously when, when I took the position down here, but I did see that we had a 94.50 print in the pre-market session and that's what I was going to use for my targets on this trade in conjunction with the NASDAQ, which we'll take a look at the NASDAQ here as well, had targets up on the day at 75, 25, 75s. So right in there, you'll see the, the levels on the day here for the NASDAQ um, ended up being, whoa, I don't know what the chart was doing there, um, ended up being at 75, 25, 75s. And our support zone down here of 750 to 7496. Now, the one thing I want to point out again here with the NASDAQ, right, that led me to get into the NASDAQ and the S&Ps here. Uh, so for the lows right through here, again, this is kind of that same thing that I was looking at in the S&Ps. We had kind of popped through. We got those new lows after uh, under these little lows here and then started popping back up through and trading up through the open. So my average fill on the day for the NASDAQ, which I took a two lot, uh, was good for 7504.62. So just prior to this opening print there, as we rallied back up, went ahead and stepped into a position there. And my average exit on that was 75 and a quarter. So I front ran the level by uh, just a little bit there. I think I had an order at on my two lot at 75.25 and 75.25.50s. Um, that went ahead and got me out right up in there as we rallied into this trade. And again, this was at nine, basically 9.43 this morning. You can see right around here is about 9.45. Um, so I was in and out of the markets within the first 15 minutes of the opening bell today uh, and good for you know 2,000 and some change there on the day uh, for these futures markets. Now, the divergence that I'm talking about here, you know, these little lows that kind of came in place here with the S&Ps and the NASDAQ, this bar right there. Let's take a look at the Dow here. And this is what really actually got me into the trade. Oops, got to wait for that to happen. You'll notice here on the Dow, these are those lows, right? At that same moment in time, which is right there, the Dow actually made an equal low. So the Dow did not get the new lows under that first morning low that the S&Ps and NASDAQ did. And if we take a look at the Russell here, as the Russell loads up, you'll see the same thing here this morning. Now these charts are gonna be just a slight difference uh, just based on volume. So I'm looking at a 987 tick chart. The S&Ps and the NASDAQ do more volume than the Russell and the Dow. Um, in fact, the S&Ps do more volume than all three of the other indices combined. Um, the S&Ps are looking at 1.2 million contracts on the day. NASDAQ's at 367,000. Russell right now is at 129,000. 
and the Dow is at 165,000. So the S&P is by far, you know, that adds up to be what, about 500 and uh, 667,000 or so. If you combine those other three, the S&P is right now are at 1.2 million contracts traded on the day. So you'll notice there's a little bit difference here and you can see it just based on, you know, how much action is going into the day, how many bars we have on this 987 tick chart, right? So this is 987 tick chart. Um, anyways, you'll notice here, same thing. The Russell does not pierce the low. In fact, it actually sets a little bit of a higher low at that same moment in time, which would be right there, that the S&Ps and the NASDAQ had kind of popped to those new lows. So when I saw that happen, I went ahead and stepped into the long side. I knew my risk was defined under those lows, and I knew where my targets were. I had predefined targets um, on the day up at 75, 25, 75s for the NASDAQ and up over 94.50s for the S&Ps. And the other good thing is, in both of those markets, we were coming right off of a level that I had in place. Um, and this level to level strategy is something that I teach in the MLT Pro course, um, as well as the divergence strategy. So how I get these levels, these 2889 levels, um, you know, these 75.0150s, these 74.96 levels here in the NASDAQ, uh, and then even all the way up to the targets there of 75, 25, 75 uh, that you can see here on the chart for the NASDAQ. How I get these levels and define them all in the pre-market session before going into the day uh, and what it is that I'm looking to do. I teach all of that in the MLT Pro course, uh, as well as showing you guys each and every day here on YouTube, kind of how I'm breaking those down uh, and trading each of those. So knowing that we had both uh, a level at that specific price and we had that little mini divergence this morning uh, is what led me to step into this trade and actually scale up my size a little bit because that trade was ranked higher. Uh, so I have a, a rating system or a grading system, if you will, of you know, A, B, C, D, E, blah, 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 of what I'm going to rate my play um, depending on how many different marks or criteria that it meets um, for, for my scale. And that's the reason I was able to step in a little bit larger size today for the S&Ps. And again, combining that with the knowledge that I had from the Russell not getting those new lows in the pre-market session uh, is what led me to take this trade today. Um, good for, like I said, a little over $2,000 in profits between the S&Ps and the NASDAQ uh, in about the first 15 minutes of the day. So that's what I got for you guys on this video. Thank you guys so much for listening in. And if you enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up on this video. Uh, if you have not already done so, then you're going to want to hit that subscribe button as well. Click the little bell notification when um, I go live or when I post a new video, you will be notified. Um, and if you don't already know, I go live each and every morning about nine o'clock and I share these levels, these 7496s, these 7501150s, all of these levels that I'm looking for and what my game plan is for the day each and every day at 9 a.m. on YouTube for free. So go ahead and click that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification. And if you want to work with me closer, um, I have an MLT Discord channel with myself, Perry, Rob, all of the other members in there. There's going to be a link in the description below where you can click and join me in there. So take care. I hope it helps you guys. And I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Trade safe and I'll see you guys tomorrow.